don't know who I am, my name is Sam Suber. I am the career service specialist here at NextGenT. And today, very excited to have a special guest, Anthony Nugan. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I've, uh, I'm currently working at Amazon. Um, I've been there for about a year. Uh, I grew up in the San Jose area, um, went to school in Irvine. Nearing graduation is when I applied the shotgun technique again, and I just threw my resume out there. So now I got some internship experience. This is how I filled it up. Mm -hmm. um, along the way uh, is when I started working on a lot of personal projects too. I had personal projects, some school projects that I can add on to my resume. And um, doing internships helped me learn how to format my resume, how to interview. So now I think I'm kind of ready to get like a real job. Um, well, get like a real full-time job yeah. so I can start a career and get like, set up my 401k and all the other things you need to do as an adult. So a couple months before, I threw out my application. First was just going for regular security jobs. I was looking for a security analyst, maybe a security engineer. I really wasn't sure what I was looking for. Being um, new security. Yeah, I was at the point since I had like a year of experience with security. Yeah. I wanted to just um, do something with security. Yeah. So that's when I started doing more research on my own to see what type of security jobs are there. What can I do with my set of experience now? Um, what I can get into. Yeah. With that, I, um, with, with a resume filled with projects, internship experience, and like other technical words that shows what kind of skills I had. Um, I did get some interviews more, so now I just started getting more interviews. Um, more interviews lets you a lot of more practice. I failed a lot of interviews because um, sometimes when you talk to people, they get like, "Oh, these big jobs and stuff." But no, uh, I failed like like five to five interviews. There's, I had a lot of failures along with my successes. So it's not always like daisies and stuff. Not everyone gets to where they are without failing a lot. So it's okay to fail. That was one thing you need to learn too, because you need to use each of those failures as an opportunity to grow and to learn from it. Yep. So failed a lot of internships. I mean, failed a lot of interviews. Um, um, so good thing the Amazon interview went well because I failed a good amount of times before I had my Amazon. It was good work. practice. It was Definitely good practice. great practice. I had great practice before going in. So how did you find Amazon? Had you oh, sorry, applied? Brown. Okay, so um, I was at the point where sometimes I would apply to jobs multiple times because I forget that I applied to the same job. Right. And uh, there's a point where you just have to put your resume inside a database of a company. Mm. So I put in my resume in the database of Amazon sometime around like February. Graduation is like what June of this time. Yeah. Um, and my resume was in their system. And you did that just by applying to a job. I, I applied to one position at Amazon, mm -hmm. but then I applied to, um, I, I, they also said, hey, if you, if you want to like raise, increase your opportunities of getting an interview, just put your resume on their database. Uh -huh. This is when I'll go to how not only just humans look at your resume. Um, how I formatted my resume was I had a lot of technical words of the skills that I knew. Like in security, there's um, the type of tools I would use. I would use like, um, based on the experience I had from my, my internships, IDS, which is like an intrusion detection system, I networking things like TCP, IP, and all the stuff that you would see back here. <laughs> um, I would say like uh, the security scanning tools I use. So like I knew how to do like Nmap scans, a port, which is a port scan. I need to do like learn how to analyze packet captures using Wireshark. So all these technical words that will very likely appear on the job description because many times is based on the job description is when they would first have um, computer generated things to look for keywords in a database of resumes. And uh, mine came up <laughs> after about like a month before I was gonna graduate. And wow. then the recruiter um, from Amazon just hit me up. They were like, uh, hey, uh, your resume looks like it kind of fits uh, the description here. Do you wanna go for an interview? And I'm like, Oh, I'm not going to get the job, but sure, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> no, like a practice. Yeah. And when you say hit you up, do you mean they called you, they emailed you? How did they, they reach out to me. you? They emailed me. They just okay. reached out to me. So that's that's when <clears throat> luck comes into play too. Um, so putting your, putting your resume out there can sometimes lead to some responses back. Um, so they reached out to me and I'm like, sure, I'll try. But I was going in with the mentality of, if I get it, great. If not, I mean, uh, I have like backup offers from smaller companies um, um 
So at first I was going to go for one of the smaller companies that was just where I was just going to be like a regular security analyst. Mm -hmm. um, but um, now I moved on. And um, uh, after passing the Amazon interview, which I'll talk about the process okay. later, okay. Um, then um, took the Amazon role instead. That's exciting. That's very exciting. So maybe talking about the interview process, was there multiple interviews that you did? Were they technical, non-technical? Mm -hmm. What did the interview process look like? Okay, so um, for Amazon, they, Amazon and a lot of other large tech companies, we call them, we usually refer to them as the big N tech companies because um, we use N just because there's, a lot of them just go in and out and what they are. They're usually the fame companies like Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, hmm. Apple. They all kind of, interview somewhat similarly but what made amazon um it's uh, it in its own amazon has a set of leadership principles and you need to um use examples when you're interviewing use examples that would relate to what some of those leadership principles are um some of those leadership principles are like um customer obsession like you focusing on the needs of the customer um you like uh, aiming big like always aiming big and like um, scaling what you can do and another leadership principle would be um, choosing the right decision, but quickly. Because you also need to like work fast in a business. You need to be able to like work efficiently. Those are a set of leadership principles. That's what you needed to base my, uh, um, uh, my interview answers are. First, I'll talk about the structure. The structure of the Amazon interview, which is similar to a lot of other tech interviews, is the first one's always the screening one. That's when an HR just calls you. That's most of the time where like they looked at your resume, they they um, and they think you might be a possible candidate. First for your for your first interview, um, that's when they just ask if you are human, like if you can <laughs> if you can probably speak and if you can talk like basic. First screen is usually really easy. That's when you work out logistics. That's when they tell you uh, um, what you're looking for. If you have any basic questions for HR, um, how that relates. You don't have to go too much in depth for what technical things you need for your first interview. So yeah. you don't need to push it or anything. This is just working out. Which, yeah, and mostly me, mostly over the phone. This yeah, the it's phone. usually, it's always over the phone. The first one's over the phone. The second one, um, for inter for Amazon, there was uh, four interviews for me in total. First one was phone screen. Second one was the manager. Third one was like manager and like another technical guy. And then fourth one was in person. Oh, so it wasn't in person until the very last one. Yeah. For Amazon, it was that way for me, right. for my position. Yeah. Um, um, so the first one was talking with about the manager. That That's where he gives me a background of what the description was. And um, and then he asked me some basic questions about what, like, um, networking questions. So in security, networking questions happen all the time. Like, des describe what happens all the time. Like, it's describe the, the three-way handshake or describe what, um, how, how one device talks to another or describe what happens when you click on google.com. Like if you search google.com, press enter, how does all that work from you typing it on your keyboard to it, you, that, the, the website, going back to their servers, how it searches, and then how it comes back to you to display back on your screen. So something like that is what they would usually ask, what I got asked on my first interview. Mm -hmm. And I also got, got asked again, on my in-person interview, which is kind of funny because I just kind of regurgitate myself. You can find a lot of what questions they ask, like if you just Google it, or if you <laughs> yeah. go on Glassdoor. So Glassdoor if you go on is Glassdoor, helpful. Glassdoor, they'll just usually tell you what to do. So that's one way to prepare. Yeah. And then um, I answered a lot of technical questions. I was good enough to go to the next round. That's when I would talk to both the manager plus someone on the team. They would further ask me more technical questions over there. Um, a lot of the big tech companies, they would also um, ask you to do like a coding challenge. Um, just to see, because my, my role required some technical abilities. So I did like a easy level lead code challenge. Um, that's where uh, you, do you know what lead code is? I personally do not. Oh, okay. So um, you can find out what a lot of the technical challenges are on lead code. Uh, lead code is just a website where they tell you easy and medium and hard level difficulty coding challenges and just do it. <laughs> You do it, and if you can, um, if you can pass whatever certain level, that's when you can go into the next round. So I uh, did that. Then I had my in-person interview. Um, the in-person interview for Amazon lasted from nine a.m. to I think like two a.m. So they're back-to-back -back interviews. Um, you do get a free lunch though, which was nice. They did feed me. Yeah. Um, but it was like back-to-back. -back. 
one hour each person. And um, each person would ask me uh, usually like a technical one, one set, one interviewer would ask me like technical questions. Another would ask me non-technical questions. So that's when I can start. That's where um, having work experience and how you would handle situations matter. So answered a lot of technical questions. I, I did a lot of whiteboarding as well. So on interviews, they usually have like a whiteboard where, because they want you to show that you can talk about some of the things you worked on. Yeah. You can you can just show like a portfolio of what you did, but how you did it was very important as well. So um, like, for example, I had to describe what an architect, how, do, how would I architecture like an entire security operation center? Um, so I would talk about, I would draw like networking diagrams. I would draw how um, this device talks to this device using what protocol. If you include like an intrusion detection system in between, um, this is where you would put it in. Um, and then, and then uh, servers would be here, computers would be here, the outside internet would be the other. So I drew a lot of diagrams to describe what I did. Another whiteboarding problem that I did was I worked on uh, how the web server was built. So like uh, at my old internship, I had to talk about how, how the architecture of the front end to the back end to the database and how that communicates with other parts of other devices worked. So drew a lot of pictures uh, and then I talked about it, which was very important because you need to be able to describe what you're doing well, where the other person can understand what you're doing. Um, yeah, and before you had mentioned yeah. that an important part was even documenting what you're doing. So you can do something and then an important part is actually documenting. That yeah. sounds like being able to describe it is an important yes. part in the yes. interview mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. And uh, pictures help too. So picture. <laughs> I a lot of pictures. My lines are pretty good. I had to like connect one line to another to show that this computer talks to this computer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, uh, after my interview, those like six people, super stressful. Like you come out shaking, like, oh my God, I can't believe I did this. And I'm like, well, I, I think it went kind of well. Um, you answer all the questions pretty smoothly. There was maybe one or two questions that you mess up on, but usually uh, when you were interviewing and they, and then you can't answer a question, mm -hmm. like they asked you a technical question, like, what does this mean? But if you can't, if you can't, like, if you're not able to answer it correctly, sometimes it's okay to say you don't know but you would talk about what you would do to find out the answer. Because that's one thing you can like learn from an interview. If you don't know what it is, I usually talk about, what I usually do is I just Google it. <laughs> but if I have other people around me, I would ask maybe another technical person that is working on the same project or ask for advice for whoever is around me just so I can get a better understanding of where it is. Right. Um, another good skill to have is connecting one person to another. And then I was saying like, okay, what if, this problem can be solved by someone else, and I know who can do it. Um, I can connect those people just so you, so at the end, um, the project still gets finished at like a certain time period. Just because even though I don't know the answer to something, um, that's how you one way to find the answer. Exactly. So that's in, how your, answer in your it. career, you're not going to know the answers to everything. Yeah, exactly. You want to be able to continue mm -hmm. to learn. So that's almost good to showcase how you go about finding and learning new things. Mm -hmm. At Google, there's a thing called like a T-shaped skill distribution on how um, uh, a lot of hiring managers want uh, what they're looking for. The T is is kind of like this. So the bottom of the T would be um, someone that would know a broad range of skills first. So like, so people that know tech, they can refer to, they understand jargon from like everywhere else. Yeah. But your skill level for you to exceed and for you to like do really well in a certain field, that's when you want to start specializing in one thing. So let's say you know um, networking, and but mm -hmm. if you want to start specializing to get like the top of the T, mm -hmm. you would focus on security, but you could keep specializing, getting more specific. You can go um, from just security operations and like you analyzing data to you building tools that you would do to analyze the data for you, automating the process and you keep expanding onto it. So you know a wide range of skills and you can, um, the wide range of skills helps you work with others. And then the specialized skills gives you a set of skills that um, allow you to really get good at what you're doing. And then there would always be less and less people doing that. So there's like less in competition. And then that just makes you more the valuable 
as Definitely. like an asset to a company. What was the hardest part of your Amazon interview process? Okay, so um, Amazon, there's a thing called a bar raiser. And with a bar raiser, um, that is someone not on the team itself. A bar raiser is when you have, or is when someone from another team who has, who makes sure that that interviewee that's coming in raises the bar. I needed to be better than a lot of the other applicants already in, or like better than a lot of, or better than a, a some, let's say like 50% of the current employees that might be on the team or so. Wow. That's, that's called a bar raiser. Amazon has these things called, to make sure that a bar, a bar raiser also comes in from a perspective that is outside the hiring team. The hiring manager has a set of things that they're looking for, right? They're, they need to fill this description. But a bar raiser makes sure you, make sure, makes sure that you fit fit into the Amazon culture. Like when I see people get interviewed, mm -hmm. we you want to see that you did your homework, you did your research. Right. So um, this is where a lot of the other resources come in. You want to know where to look. I look on Glassdoor, I check on Reddit, and I checked on other subreddits on what technical questions might be asked. I Google just like almost everything just to prepare for the interview. Yeah. If I can give some tips on what you would need to do to get like an entry level position in security is you can get like a baseline of, of the security certifications. Um, network engineers. Yeah, Very like network too. engineers. So like in security, I have a slide right here on what skills you need to what skills you need to learn. It's kind of far from here, but it's building like a home lab. So in a home lab, uh, so like this is what I put here is like if an interviewer asks you how to deploy an IDS, an intrusion detection system, to monitor for attackers attempting to move laterally in a network, how would you describe it? And then if you have a home lab, you can talk, you can build a lot of the security systems itself too, because in a home lab is when one network would talk to another, like you have one server that talks to another server. Within that server, you would have a lot of virtual machines. Each virtual machine has to either talk to each other or not talk to each other based on what, what you open and how you configure it. Um, inside each of your home labs and the virtual machines, you can add different tools to it. You can add... Uh, monitoring systems, you can have log management, so like ELSA and Greylog, and you can have like penetration testing virtual machines. The most popular one for security is Kali Linux. And um, you can have all that to work together and you have like a full playground that you can play with that you can use to develop some of the skills um, that you need to get into security. Jacob Hess here. Thank you guys for viewing the video. I hope you really enjoyed it. And I'd also like to remind you that if you're truly serious about your career in information technology, be sure to check out our Career Blueprint and Engineer Training Program at www.zerotoengineer.com.